Let us begin. As Hashem, today's daf is daf Zion. Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, uh, we're going to start from daf Vav, Ahmed Beis, uh, two lines from the bottom. Okay, we're discussing whether a person can have uh, first time intercourse, first time Bia on, on Friday night. So we, had, we came across the opinion of Shmuel, who said that it is not permitted. Why? Because you're making a chabura. You're making a wound to the woman. And that's, of course, one of the Ab Malachas, part of Shechita, and, uh, and therefore it's not permitted. So the Gemara doesn't understand why is it considered uh, making a wound in the woman. Masav Rabami. Rabami asked the question. We learned in the, in the Mishnah, in the in the Reisim, the Shabbos, it's a Mishnah, Mishach the Idias, Hamapis Mursa, uh, we learned Hamapis Mursa B'Shabbos, someone who punctures a a wart on Shabbos, okay? You puncture a wart on Shabbos. Inside the wart is pus and blood. In La'asar's law pair, if you're trying to make an opening, you just want, uh, you want the opening chayef. Uh, then you're chayef. If you want that opening to be there, because as we learned that if you create an opening, uh, even in a human body, that's called building something. You're building an opening. So you can't build on Shabbos, but that's not usual why a person would want to puncture a, a wart on Shabbos. But if your idea is to take the pus out, we go to Daf Zayin Amar Aleph, potter, that's potter, and, and, and that is even permitted to do on Shabbos. Now, the, the, what the Gemara is thinking like this, puncturing a wart should be like puncturing the hymen, and therefore, puncturing the wart should be like puncturing the hymen, and 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 there should not be an iser. Just like puncturing a wart, it's, it's permitted. You're taking out blood, but it's permitted. So also puncturing the hymen uh, on, on, should be permitted. So how could Shmuel aser? And so the Gemara hosam over there by the wart, pikid va'akir. It's already uprooted. It's just hanging around in like a case uh, surrounded by that scab of the wart. And therefore, you're not really doing anything. Hacha over here by the hymen, Pekid veloy akir. It's it's somehow deposited there, but it's not uprooted. So Rashi explains, and I, I don't know the anatomy here, but Rashi says the blood is nivla. It's not uprooted, but it's it's sort of swallowed into the walls of the uterus, and therefore, uh, even though it's not really connected through blood vessels, it's like a deposit, but still, it's not as as visible as the blood inside of a pus, and therefore Rashmuel held it's prohibited. New Gemara, Daf Zayin, Rab Ami Shara Lemilvula Batchil B'Shabbos. Rab Ami permitted a person who got married, uh, let's say, in Friday late afternoon. They didn't write a ksuba, and he said, okay, make the meal and, and, and do your first B on Shabbos. Amri Le Rabbanim, but the Rabbanim had a problem with this wedding. There was a rush wedding. Vlohaya didn't you, you didn't write a ksuba. And we know a kala, if you don't have a ksuba, you can't have relations with your wife. Amalahu. So he said to them, okay, at the suha metalton. On Shabbos, just let her give her some possessions that belong to the husband. Let her hold on to it. That will be in liu of her ksuba. And Matzah Shabbos, you'll write a ksuba. And that's enough. Even though you're not supposed to make kinyon and on Shabbos, but it's a mitzvah to, it's mitzvah to do it the first time right after you get married. So this was in liu of the ksuba. Um, so a, a lot of times uh, in, 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 like in um, a person, it happened by me. I remember that uh, there was a good uncle that had a beautiful ksuba written up. And somehow I wasn't aware that, uh, that you need to take home the ksuba. So I, uh, my wife and I left the house and left the wedding hall. We didn't take home the ksuba. And then we realized the next morning we didn't have the ksuba. So we quickly had to rewrite Aksuba, somehow it got misplaced. Um, but uh, during a hurricane, sometimes, uh, or people have to leave their homes, they, they forget to take the Aksuba, and they can't be with each other, as you learned in the Gemara over here. The Gemara says like this, Rav Zvid Shari Lemivel Batchila B'Shabbos. Rav Zvid also gave permission for somebody to make the first time Bia on Shabbos. Ike de Amri, others say it was more than that. Rav Zvid Gufe Bar Batchila B'Shabbos. Rav Zvid got married, and his first time was on Shabbos. Rabbi Yehuda Sharei Lemivo Batchila Biyantiv. Rabbi Yehuda gave permission for somebody to have his first Biyah on Yantiv. 
Now here we're introducing the Yomtev situation over here. Amar, Amar Rav, Amar Rav, Amar Rav Papi Mishmei the Rava. Now Papi said in the name of Rava, Loi Tamer, don't say be Yomtev Shari the Shari Habashabes. That that only on Yomtev Rav Yehuda gave that permission. Habashabes Aser, but Rav Yehuda will hold that it's Aser to have the first time on Shabbos. The who had been really a feel of Shabbos Nami Shari. Rabbi Huda would have given him his permission and leniency to be able to do Bia for the first time on Shabbos. But the story that was presented to him, where he gave the leniency, was on Yantiv. But who had then, the idea would be, uh, it would apply both by if you give a permission on Yantiv, you give also the permission to do it on Shabbos. But, says the Gemara, a new, a new opinion. So far, we have two opinions. Shmuel says it's Asr, but it seems to be that most of the Amaroim held it's permitted to do be on Shabbos and on Yontif. Rapapa Mishmei the Rava Amma, but Rapapa held in the name of Rava, said in the name of Rava, be Yontif Shari. Only on Yontif it's permitted to do, to do, uh, to do be on first time, be Shabbos Asr. Now, why would Yontif be? Because he would hold that just like you're allowed to slaughter an animal on Yontif, you're allowed to do bia on yantiv, and and because it's a similar idea, you're causing blood to flow. So in yantiv, oichel nefesh is permitted, and we have this concept that just like you're allowed to do malacha for cooking and any food related uh, preparations is permitted to be done on yantiv. So anything, even non food re- preparation permitted, like carrying in a machsa to shul, is permitted on yantiv. So if so, th- therefore yantiv is also permitted. To be to do bia for the first time on yantiv, because you're allowed to slaughter on yantiv. But b'shabes, since there's no permission to slaughter an animal on Shabbos, oh sir, it's not permitted. Amalei rapapi rapapa. So rapapi said to rapapa, my daitach, what is this? What is your thinking over here? Mitoich shehutra chabura l'tzarech, because you because we permit to do a wound for l'tzarech for the needs of oichel nefesh for the needs of food preparation. You're allowed to wound an animal, basically slaughter an animal to 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 eat to eat on yantiv. Hotranami, that's why it's permitted. Shaloy l'tzarech, if it has nothing to do with animal related or food related, you're still allowed to do the malacha as we learned in Masech the Masech Beitza. That uh, that since you can since there's a permission to do certain malachas for oichel nefesh, it's permitted to do malachas even if it's non oichel nefesh related. Ella, if that's the case, meata according to that logic, muto la asois One should allow to take some incense, pour it onto like a coals on yantif to smoke up the house to make it smell good. The mitoich shuhutra havar l'tzarich. Since you're allowed to light up a fire and cook, uh, light up the fire. You're allowed to turn the knob and uh, make the fire stronger for cooking on yantif. So you're allowed to make a fire and, and intensify a fire, even if it's not food related. And we have a, a Mishnah, a, 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 a halacha that says you can't do this on, cha, on Yantiv. You can't uh, p- make this fire for the incense on Yantiv, only food. So how could how could you say, mitoich? since you can do this, you can do that? Amalei. So Rapapa answered Rapapi, Alecha Amakra, on you, the Pasik was specific. And it was was precise. Ach ashe yeochel lechol nefesh. The Torah says by yantiv only food related things that you're preparing for all humans, right? So we darshan dava hashava lechol nefesh. You can do not only food preparations, food malachis, but something that's equalized for anybody. Which means, which means that you know most people have relations with their wife, uh, and therefore. It's something that's that's permitted to be done on Yantiv, even though it's not specifically food related. It's lechol nefesh, something that anybody could enjoy. The the, the putting uh, besamim, putting spices and herbs onto incense on, on on a fire on Yantiv is not something that everybody is agreeable to. That some people are find that repulsive. You know, if you sometimes smell the the incense in the in the in the streets of Manhattan. You find it repulsive. It's not for everybody. Since it's not for everybody, then it's not permitted to be done on Yantiv. Only things that are anybody can enjoy. So Rav Acha, the son of Rava, asked Rav Ashi, he misunderstood. He said, El Ma'ata, what about this? If you have a deer, okay, we talked about it, venison meat, be Yantiv. 
Not everybody. It's the most expensive type of meat because it's very difficult to catch a deer. Hoyle the Anish, so only rich people can afford it. Hoyle the Anish, Shavalichon Nepesh, since not everybody can afford such an expensive animal. Hachinami to Asr le Mishchate, would it be? Prohibited to to shecht and yantiv. Not everybody can enjoy such a such a, a meat because not everybody can afford to catch it here. Would that be not permitted on yantiv? Just like you said, you're not allowed to do incense on yantiv. Uh, you're not allowed to smoke up your house on yantiv. Shouldn't you not allowed to sl- slaughter a deer on yantiv? Amale. So he says like this. No, you. Oh no, I meant to say davar at soirech lechol nefesh kamina. That's something that's needed. Anybody can enjoy svi deer meat. Tzarech l'chol nefeshu is something that can be desired and needed by anybody. Everybody likes meat, but not everybody can, can, can enjoy the taste of a mugmar, of those, of those fragrances. And therefore, that's why the fragrance fire is not permitted on Yontif. So therefore, that's another reason why only Yontif they gave the permission to, to, um, to um, only Yontif they gave the permission to, to Dubia, but not every, not on Shabbos. Omar Rav Yaakov Bar Idi. Rav Yaakov Bar Idi said, Hoira Rav Yochanan Betsaiden. Rav Yochanan gave the ruling, a ruling, a Betsaiden in the city of Tsaiden, also Livo Batchila Beshabbos. Rav Yochanan gave a specific ruling, you're not allowed to do the Bia the first time on Shabbos. Now, this word Hoira is an odd word because you don't issue, issue a ruling to prohibit something because it's easy to prohibit. If you don't know the answer, you prohibit it. So that's not called a ruling. A ruling is something based where you research the matter and you came to a, a lenient conclusion. So that Gemara asks a question on that kind of language. Do you find this language of issuing a ruling for to prohibit something? That's not, that's, not the, that's not the kind of language that you use to prohibit something. Because most Rabbanon can prohibit anything. That's not a ruling. A ruling is to permit something. So Gemara says, and yes, yeah, sometimes you find the word hayra um, in context of something that's prohibited. And that means that the person researched the matter. That's what it means. Rabbi Yochanan really researched the matter. It wasn't just he just made, prohibited it. He researched the matter and came to the conclusion, you're not allowed to be boiled on, on Shabbos. And the Gemara brings proof that you use that language of Hira. But now we learned in the Mishnah, Hira We find in the Mishnah that let's say somebody made a, he said he's going to be a Nazar in the five towns. Okay, he was a Nazar. The, the halachi is that there's Tumas Eretz Amen, that Chazal said that anybody living in Chutzla Eretz has a Tuma on them, or because of Kavarim or something like that. He is, so it's not an ideal place to become a Nazir. And so therefore, they can ask him that when he gets to Eretz Yisrael, he has to recount the Naziris. So Bishami says, you have to just recount 30 days. If you made a Naziris for five years, and you kept the five years in Chutz Laretz, when you get to Israel, you have to recount at least a 30 day to make up for keeping that Naziris in Chutz Laretz. But Shiva says, no. On Hilni Hama, uh, I think it was Hilni Hamalka, somebody, uh, Hilni Hamalka, and her son went out to war, and she made a promise she's going to be a Nazir in Chus Laretz, and then she went up to Eretz Yisrael, so they they issued the ruling that she should go like Basila, that she should be a Nazir again, another re seven years, seven years. So we see that they issued the ruling more stricter. The Inami, another case where you use the word Hira'a, to mean issue a ruling in the prohibit uh, to prohibit something, the Tanya we learned in the Mishnah, the Tanya we learned in the Brisa, Chut Hashidra Shenifsak Berubai. Let's say you have an animal, you have the spinal cord that just severed most of it. It severed uh, most of the, I guess, the circumference of it. So then, uh, the, uh, the diameter of it. So there, then, uh, then it's it's trefa. Dear Rebbe. Even if you have a puncture in the in the spinal cord, the animal is treif. Hoyre Rebbe, Rebbe, who usually paskin leanly, but he's in his own house, he paskin kerab Yankov, that even a puncture. So we see that he's using the word hoyre again for for uh, for for to, to prohibit something. This is a side point. Allah is not like Rabyanka. That means if you slaughter an animal and you find a puncture, just a puncture, like a pinhole in the spinal cord, 
It's still not, it's not a trefa, only if it's severed on 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 the majority of it. Back to the sugya of of uh, of our our sugya of being boil on Shabbos of Nachman Bar Yitzchok Masni Hochi. He had the teaching like this. Amar Rabbi Bo, Rabbi Bo said over. Shoel Rabbi Shmuel Ben Yankov. Rabbi Shmuel Ben Yankov asked the question. The Minsar. He's from Tsar. He asked as Rabbi Yochanan, as Rabbi Yochanan Bitzayidon when he was in the city of Tsaidan. So Rabbi Shmuel asked Rabbi Yochanan directly. And and Rabbi Bo was saying, Shmoy, I was present and listening as the question was being asked to Rabbi Yochanan. Ma'u livo b'tchilu b'shabes. Can you be boiled for the first time on Shabbos? And Amalei and Rabbi Yochanan clearly said, oh, sir, it's prohibited. The halacha, the halacha remains, muta livo b'tchilu b'shabes. And that's it. The halacha is not like all the prohib- uh, we paskin that it's permitted to be boiled on the tchilu b'shabes, even though you're making the wedding, let's say, on Friday night. Or, you know, you're making the Suda on Friday night. They used to have weddings on Friday night. So we, why don't we be concerned that we shouldn't prohibit that because you maybe slaughter a, a chicken when if you see you don't have enough food. There's no gazera like that. Or we don't hold of that it's a dam mifkat pocket. Uh, the dam is uh, you're making a wound. It's actually deposited there. It's davashenim skaven. So there's many reasons why we would say that it's mutter to be boiled for the first time on Shabbos. New Gemara. All this was said in the name of Rav. Okay, whether you're marrying a virgin, or whether you're marrying an almana, a widow, widower, um, to una bracha, a widow, you need, you need to make sheva bracha. So if you marry a basula or an almana, yeah, you need to make sheva bracha. The seven brachas. So the Gemara says, Umi Amar Rav Huna Haki. Did Rav Huna say such a thing? But when you marry an almana, there's no sheva brachas. That's what it implies. So how do you, how do you re- reconcile these contradictory statements? Loikasha, it's not difficult. Khan, when is when do you need sheva brachas? Is the bachar a guy who was never married? Shenos almana, he's marrying a widow. Uh, uh, so therefore, a, a person who was never married marrying an almana, fine. Then they need a bracha. Can, but in the case when there is no Sheva Brachas, Ba'almain, Shanosa Almona, a man who is a widower, he marrying a widow. So then, so then, so both of them, it's really a second marriage for both of them. Not the, so therefore there's less, there's more issues there. Uh, and 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 simply there's not enough uh, happiness to require a bracha. That's what the Gemara seems to imply. Um, okay, so there that's that's a, that's what the Gemara says. So the Gemara says, the almon shnosa almono loy. When a widower marries a widow, uh, when when a widower marries a widow uh, on on uh, 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 that, there's no um, bracha. But Amar Rav Huna, Amar Nachman, Rav Nachman said, Amali Huna Bar Nosen Tana. We learned in a brisa. Menayin lebriches chesana basara. How do you know you make sheva brachas and you have to have ten people at the sheva brachas? Shenamah, because the pasuk says in Rus, Bayaz, the widower, is marrying Rus, the widow, and it says Vayika Chasar Nasha Mizikneir. He took ten people who were the judges of the city. Vayoyim, and he said Shvu Poy, sit here by Yeshevu, and they, and that's why did he take ten people? Presumably to make Sheva brachas. So you see two things. First of all, you need ten people, but you see a widow where who's marrying a widow needs Sheva brachas. Bayaz Almain Shenos Almana Abba. Boyaz was an Alma in a widower who's marrying an Almana Rus, and in you see they you take Sheva Brachas. So what does it mean an Almana Aina to Una Bracha? So the Gemara says, Ma Aina to Una Bracha Dama Rav Huna. What did Rav Huna mean when he said you don't need a Bracha? Aina to Una Bracha Kol Zayin. Very interesting. When you don't need Sheva Brachas for seven days. For one day to Una Bracha. The first day they get married, yes, they make Sheva Brachas. But you don't need Sheva Brachas for seven consecutive days. Like when a Bachar marries a Psula, they, there's Sheva Brachas for seven days. So the Gemara asks the question if there's only Bracha one day, Tanya, that we learned in the Brisa, Shaktu Chachamim al Tukonis B'nai Yisrael, Chachamim took, uh, took, were very concerned for the Jewish girls. That were widow, that were widows, almanas, that they wanted when an when an almana gets married, she sameach imo gimel yamim, that they should they should, the guy should not go to work and should be happy with his new almana 
for three days. That means he gets married Thursday night. So he's so Thursday he's off. Friday he's off. Shabbos he's off. He's not going to go to work. And then Sunday he'll go back to work after marrying this Almona. So Bamai, what is that talking about? Three day, and presumably the Gemara is thinking that if there's happiness for three days, there's also bracha for three days. Bamai, what are we talking about? Iba Bachar, if it's a if a guy, if it's somebody who's never married before is marrying a widow, Ha'amret Shiva, you say that a, a, a Bachar, for the first time he's getting married, even if he's marrying a widow, he, he has seven days of celebration. Iba Almain, if it's a if it's a widow. Uh, a, a man who was once married before, he's a widower, and he's marrying a widow, Ha'amrit Yaim Echid, you told me that there's only one day of marriage, of celebration. So the Gemara assumed that being happy and bracha is one of the same. So the Gemara is going to say now it's totally different. You make the bracha when an almoin marries an almona, right? An almoin marries an almona, yes, they make shaver brachas by the wedding, but we want them to be happy for three days, but there's no Sheva Racha. So you just want, don't want him to go to work. Because, okay, so that's why it says, Iba is Ema, the Almon, Yoim Echad, it's an Almona, marry, an Almon marrying an Almona, Yoim Echad Bracha. yes, the first day they get married by the Chuppah, they make Sheva Brachas. Ushloisha, the next three days, he should take off the Simcha just to be happy with his new wife. He doesn't make Sheva Brachas, but it's just not going to work. The Iba is Ema, if you want, I can tell you, that it's Babachar, Shiva Labracha Ushlaish the Simcha. That when a Bachar is marrying an Almana, then for the seven days that they have meals, they, they, each meal they make Sheva Brachas. But for three days, he just doesn't go to work. So he'll come home and be back with his Almana, this guy who was never married before, and he'll, and he'll have Sheva Brachas then. But he could go to work beyond the, after the three days. Because when you think about it, the Sheva Brachas, the idea of Sheva Brachas is a celebration for him. You know, it's a blessing for him. He's taking over leadership of a new household. So we make Brachas. So it depends on him. If it's his first time getting married, so then for seven days we make this Brachas. If it's not his first time, then if he was, an, if he was married already once before, then we only do it by the second marriage for one time. Simcha, being happy and not going to work, is for her. It's for her benefit. So for Almana, at least, and no matter what, we at least want three days of happiness where the guy doesn't go to work. And that's just to, to for, that's for her benefit. So the bracha is for his benefit. The simcha is for her benefit. We go to Zion Amid Beis. Meisvei, let me ask you a question. Meisvei, mevorchen l'b'sula shiva u'l'amana yom echad. The b'risa says, you, for b'sula you make, if you marry b'sula, you make, you have the bracha seven days. Ulamana, if you marry an almana, even one day. Only one day of Sheva Brachas. My love, Afila Almana Shnisus Abacha. Wouldn't this apply that if a, a, a Bachar marries an Almana, he, there's only, uh, you only make one day of Brachas. But you just told me that a Bachar, when, who always, when somebody was never married before, always has Sheva Brachas. So the Gemara says, no, La Almain. That price is talking about when an Almain, a widower, marries a widow, uh, then you make Brachas only one day. Avos, but the Gemara asks, Lebacho Mai, if he mar- if an Almana marries a Bachar, uh, somebody who's never married before, Shiva, then they have seven days of blessing. Yehachi, why doesn't the Bryce be more specific? Listen, Mavarchan Besula Shiva. When you marry a Besula, you have seven days. Ula Almana, Shanisus Lebachar, an Almana that's marrying a Bachar, Shiva. Ula Almana, but if he's marrying, if, if, if he's marrying an Almain, so Almana that's marrying an Almain, Yoy Mechad. That's what we should say. And says the Gemara, Milsa the Psikta Katani, it's absolute. The, uh, the lake of Besula, the Batsar Meshiva. We if you're marrying a Besula, you're always going to have seven days of brachas. The lake Almana, if you're marrying an Almana, the Batsra that will have less than your Mechad. So Almana for sure will have at least one day of brachas. But an Almana will have three days of brachas if she marries, if, uh, if uh, Almana, if she, if she marries, a bachar will have seven days of, of, of brachas. But at least the, the minimum she's going to have is one day, because if an almana marries an almoin, they'll have just one day as a bracha. So it's not really a difficult question from this brisa. Gufa. The gufa is a new piece of gemara over here, and we're going to, this is the last topic today. Gufa, we learned. Omar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman taught. Omali Huna Bar Nasan, Huna Bar Nasan taught me. Menayin, how do I know? How do you know Sheva Brachas? You have to have 10 people by the Sheva Brachas. 
And this was a COVID problem because uh, during COVID, the, the people were asking, uh, they, they set up their weddings and then they couldn't have even a minion at the wedding. So some of the psakim came in that, yes, you just have a wedding, just don't do the Sheva Brachas because Sheva Brachas is like Kaddish. It's like, a, you know, Kaddish, a Kaddusha, you need 10 people there. And so therefore the question is, where, what is the source of that? So the source is very simple, Shanama, because uh, uh, Rav Nachman said, uh, that Hunaba Nosan said that the source is because it says, Nashim Zikni He told them, let's sit here, take uh, Baya said, let's have 10 people over here, and everybody stay here, and we're gonna do Sheva Brachas. When he married Rus, Rababo Amamahak, Rababo had a source another place. In gathering, blessing Hakadish Baruch Hu, you should gather people together, which is usually 10. And when you're blessing about Mimkar Yisrael, the source of the Jewish people, which is the, the being fruitful and multiply. So this is like a source implying that you should have 10 people when you're making the bracha uh, of by the wedding. When, when you have two uh, ma- male and female getting married, and that's the source of where Jewish people come from. So the question is, Rabbi Nachman, what are Rabbi Nachman? Do with the pasuk of Machelis. He learned it out from uh, uh, Rus and Bayaz. What does he do with that pasuk? And says the Gemara, Mebayle, he needed look at the Tanya. That pasuk of Machelis teaches you something else. Hoya Rab Meir Oimer Rab Meir would say, Menayin shal filu ubarim shebemei iman amu shira al yam. How do I know when the Jews were crossing the the Kriyas Yamsuf that even a fetus in the mother's uh, stomach in in the in, uh, was saying also saying the Az Yashir? How do I know that? The whole Klal Yisrael is blessing Hashem, even Mimkar Yisrael, even, peop, even fetuses that were in the, the source of the Jewish people, even fetuses inside their mother's tummy was also saying Shira at that time. So he uses the Pasuk that teaches you an Agadic teaching. The Edach, Rav Nachman, how does he know that Agadic teaching? He says, in Cain, that, they, the, that the Jews, that the, the fetuses were calling out in Shira, from the from the stomach of, of the of their of the Jewish people, my mimkar from the sore source al iski mimkar. I could teach you another teaching that when you're blessing God by a wedding about the source of the Jewish people, you should do it bebakhelus when there's a group of ten. Now the Gemara asks, okay, but there's a clear pasuk by Rus that you need ten. So Rabbi Bo, my high crow, the Rabbi Nachman bar darshle. What does he use that pasuk for? It's a clear pasuk that indicates you need 10 people by Sheva Brachas. So answers the Gemara, Ahu le midrash. the reason why Boyas took 10, because he needed to, to make a teaching that he's permitted to marry Rus. I, the Torah says, don't marry a ger from Amoini or Mayavi. We darshan Amoini v'loy Amoinis. It's only the male that's also, not the female. Mayavi v'loy Mayavis. A male mayavi is not prohibited on a Jewish man after becoming a ger, but not a female. So he, it was a brand new drasha that you need 10 people. Because he, and I prove it to you, that's why he took 10. The Esau could die to bracha. If he was just taking a bracha and he needed 10 people to sit in on the sheva brachas, like Saki the loves the he didn't have to take judges. Why did he take judges? Because the reason why he took judges is because it was a brand new teaching of permitting boyas to marry Rus. The Edach. And so this is a good question uh, against Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman will say, Isak Midrash, Lysaki the Lavasara. If the whole point was to, to, to take 10, 10 Zakanim to make a whole new teaching, you don't need 10 Zakanim. All you need is a few to agree with your teaching, and that should be enough. Why do you need 10? So the Mar says, in you needed 10, Le Pasume Milsa to publicize it. It was such a brand new teaching. It shocked people. So therefore, to publicize it, they took 10 people. Rav Shmuel said to Rav Chana from Baghdad, I want you to bring me 10 people, and I'm going to teach you a brand new teaching. Someone who gifts a fetus. Let's say uh, a fetus, an unborn fetus. Somebody says, I want to make sure that uh, this you know, property belongs to him or her, whatever it is. So it's not yet born. It's a Dava Shaloi Bala Oilam. Kana, the fetus can acquire it uh, with the, with the, in, in that way. In other words, it now belongs to the fetus. So when the fetus is born, he actually owns the property because somebody somebody 
uh, uh, took possession of it and was acquired it on his behalf. The hill, and even though you can say a fetus is davish leibar it didn't come into this world. It's nothing. Yes, you could uh, acquire a gift on behalf of the fetus, but the Gemara says uh, If you gift a fetus, it does, he cannot acquire it because he's still not considered living. This all has to do with abortions. If you think about it, is a fetus. On one hand, we're seeing fetuses singing the Az Yashir. On one hand, we're seeing a fetus. Uh, that uh, cannot acquire items. They're not yet considered born. Tanur Abonam. We learned in Ebraisa. You do the Sheva Brachos, those seven blessings, by the Chupa, right? Like we're familiar with. When they betrothed the woman in the house, or when they made the Kedushan, they used to make the Kedushan months before the actual wedding, and they, in, in, they would actually make Sheva Brachos, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Amar Abaya, Abaya explained, Rabbi Yehuda's teaching was a certain part of Israel, Yehuda Shani, in the part of Israel that belonged to Shevet Yehuda. There, they actually would do Sheva Brachas right at the Kedushim, the, even before the Chuppah. They would make a Kedushim, like a Tenoyim, like a Vart. They make uh, the Kedushim, and then they would do the Sheva Brachas right there, because they, funny thing, they wanted the girl and the boy to have Yichid with each other to be familiar with each other and to fall in love with each other. And there's a possibility that they may do it. And therefore, and there's a reason for that because they, in Yehuda, it was very strict there that the first time a woman does it, she had to do it with the, with the, with the governor, the Goyesha governor. And therefore uh, they wanted to make sure that as many girls got, uh, had relations already, so they wouldn't be forced into uh, being raped, so to speak, by the by the Goyesha governor. So therefore, right away by the Kedushin, even before they made a formal wedding, they would do Sheva Brachas uh, in, in the part of Israel that belonged to Shevet Yehuda. So the Gemara says, Tanya Idach, we learned in another Brachas. Mevorchim birches chasanim bebeis chasanim. You make the birches erisim, the birches chasanim, and the Sheva Brachas, which we'll discuss tomorrow, and in the Chuppah. The Kedushin Bracha, Babes Erisin, the house of the Erisin. We do this all together. You know, we have the Erisin, the Kedushin, and the Chuppah all at once. But they used to do the Erisin months, months before the actual marriage. So the Gemara asks the question, this will end. What is the Bracha when you Makadish a woman? Give her the, you, you give her, before you give the ring, you make a Bracha. And then you give her the ring and you say, with this ring, So the more asks, what's the bracha you make prior? What's the bracha do you make prior to, mar- uh, to giving a kedushin? They said the bracha is like this. Baruch Ato Hashem, Baruch Ato Hashem, you are the source of blessing, Ato, you, God, who's in front of me, Hashem, who's the master of everything. Elekeinu, Elekeinu means that um, he is he he is the all powerful that takes uh, that is is you know caring de- uh, to the detail about me, Melech Oilam, the King of the world who's guiding the world as best to the best. Asher Kiddushanu beMitzvah through the mitzvahs God gave us a special kedusha holiness. Vitzivanu and commanded us in the Torah Al Haarayis that we're not allowed to marry those women that are prohibited for us to marry. Like your sister, like your like your aunt, the Asalonu as Arusus, he he prohibited us midrabonam. Okay, it's only midrabonam, uh, uh, the Arusus, those that were engaged, because Chazal said until you actually go through the chuppah, you're not allowed to have relations with your with your with your you know the one that you're the one that you're engaged to, the Hitalonu, but she one it becomes permitted for us as an Asus once we're married al yaday. Chupa through making the blessing under the chupa, the kiddushin, and after the kiddushin was done, after the betrothal was done. Rav so that's the bracha. Rav Acha Huda. He actually ended off the bracha. He's supposed to end off. Baruch Ata Hashem, blessed are you, Abishah. Mekadesh Yisrael, you bring Kedusha to the Mekadesh Ama Yisrael, you bring Kedusha to the nation of the Yisrael. Al Yedei Chupa the Kedushin through through Chupa and Kedushin, which is I don't know, it's an odd thing to end off. Um, how does this end off? Because we mentioned the word Kedushin, and we also 
you know, this is a hint to the Abishta who actually married us, the Jewish people, through Chupa and Kedushin. Because we also had like a Chupa when God took the Mount Sinai and put it over our heads uh, to accept the Torah. So we had a, like a Chupa and Kedushin as well. So it's all related into this one bracha. So that's why it's a, it, it, it's a long bracha and ends off in the bracha. Mandalay chasim, but some say you don't end off Baruch Atah Hashem. Why not? Just like when you make a bracha on fruit or break a bracha on, on a mitzvah, you don't, it's a, it's a short bracha. Bayer pre al the tilas lulav, there's not such a long bracha. Mandalay chasim, but one that put an extra ending to this bracha, that's like Kiddush on Friday night. Just like Kiddush on Friday night, you say the bracha, and you go on, and then you end up, so it's like a, every holy bracha that has the word Kiddush in it is a long bracha, which ends off with another Baruch Atah Hashem. And that's why they held, you're supposed to, and that's the way we do it, you end off, Baruch Atah Hashem, Mekadish Yisrael, Ayyidei Chupa Bekidushem. Okay, tomorrow we're going to be discussing the Sheva Brachas, but till now we're just discussing the Birchas Erison. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you.